Okay, we'll do some more in section 3.7 here. Um, so we're in problem seven, and we have f of x equals x squared minus four divided by x minus two. Okay, so we'll go through the six step procedure to sketch the graph of f. Uh, step one is to get the domain of f. The domain of f is all real numbers except for two. I can't divide by zero, right? Okay, now this function will have no vertical asymptotes or no, no, no asymptotes, period. Why is that? Because the function is not in simplified form. See, all the other functions that I gave you on this worksheet were as simplified as far as possible. So we could just keep going with our steps there. Um, and uh, let's see, so, you know, key, key words here are uh, in lowest terms. Okay, so um, x squared minus 4 factors says x plus 2 times x minus 2, and the x minus 2s will cancel. So I get x plus 2. Okay, now before we go on here, is f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, and y equals x plus 2, is that the same thing? Is that the same thing? The answer is no. It, they're not the same thing, okay? Because 2 is the one number that makes these different from each other, okay? So the domain of y equals x plus 2, that's all real numbers, right? We're graphing f of x, though. I can't use 2. Um, so, let's see. Now, there's no asymptotes, so I can skip the, uh, the next two steps. Uh, I can, stip, uh, I can skip uh, step 4, because uh, in step 4, you're determining if the function intersects the, uh, the horizontal or oblique asymptote. We don't have any of those, right? And so we're on step 5. Okay, step five is getting the intercepts. So the x-intercepts, when I set y to be zero, and I solve for x, x squared minus four equals zero, means that x squared is equal to four. So x would be two or negative two. Now, I've already said x can't be two. Okay, so we're gonna throw away two. By the way, an easier way to do this would be just to set x plus 2 equal to 0. x equals negative 2 then, right? Because these are the same thing, except for 2 is the one number that makes these different from each other. Uh, to get the y-intercepts then, uh, x needs to be 0. So, well, 2 is the one number that makes these different from each other. We're not using 2, we're using 0. So let's go ahead and plug that in here. 0 plus 2 is 2, okay? Uh, we're going to have two intercepts on this graph. They're at negative 2, 0, and 0, 2. So when I draw this curve, um, here's negative 2, 0, and here's 0, 2. Now, I mentioned that I'm going to be drawing um, y equals x plus 2 or something kind of like that. So I'm going to start by drawing this line here, but I, I don't want the whole line. You see, I'm graphing f of x. And x can't be 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So the point 2, 4, I want that not to be on the graph. Or there's going to be a hole in the graph. And, okay, we took care of 2, so let's finish drawing this line here. So what we end up getting is a line with a hole in it. Okay? In general, any factors that cancel in the numerator and denominator means that you're going to have holes in the graph at those spots. Okay, so like if I had a totally different function and I had an x plus 5 up top and an x plus 5 down under, those x plus 5s are going to cancel and I would have a hole in the graph when x is negative 5. There would not be any, any vertical asymptote there. Okay? Uh... Part, a, part a, 8, 
They want us to find a rational function that might have the graph that's given below. Okay, there's a couple of questions like this in the book. Um, so the idea is to use the, the information that is in these steps, right? The, the, the six steps that we've been doing to sketch these graphs, and we're gonna build a function. So I'll call the function f of x. Now, I notice that this function has two vertical asymptotes. They occur at x equals two and x equals negative two. Well, how, how'd they get in that? That means that two and negative two can't be used in the denominator, okay? So I'm gonna want x squared minus four in the denominator because x can't be two and x can't be negative two then, okay? Um, <clears throat> so uh, then the next thing is to get the numerator. Well, uh, how am I gonna get that? Okay, do I want to uh, just x or one up top? No, I'm not gonna want that either because if I have one or x, or, you know, some other number up top, then what I'm saying is that there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, right? Because the degree of the top would be less than the degree of the bottom. We don't have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. It's at y equals one. Okay, so um, I want the degrees to match. The degree of the top has to be the same as the degree of the bottom. So I want an x squared up top. Okay, now keep it simple. Okay, this would be the answer. I wouldn't want like a three x squared divided by x squared plus four, or x squared minus four. The reason I wouldn't want that is because then I'm saying that there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals three. We don't have a horizontal asymptote at y equals three. Okay. Um, also, I would not want this. x squared minus one divided by x squared minus four. Why not? There would still be two, horiz or two vertical asymptotes at x equal two and x equal negative two. There's also a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. So why is this no good? Well, because the intercept, the only intercept on the graph is at zero, zero. So if I plug in zero, do I get zero? With x squared minus one divided by x squared minus four? No, I get one fourth. So you'd be saying that zero one fourth is on the graph. No, it's not. Okay, so we're not gonna want that at all. Okay, um, this would be the answer. Okay. Um, here's the, the homework in this section. I, I also um, have some homework on the next page that I'd like you to look at. Um, so uh, in this section also is um, where you're solving some rational equations. Um, I, I don't really care for the, the problems that are in the book. Uh, the problems that are in the book are kind of weak, actually. Um, and uh, so let's let's get some practice solving, um, you know, some, some examples here. Um, I got uh, three examples in my notes, and then, um, and then uh, on the next page, uh, I'd like you to look at these five homework problems. The answers are, are all there, okay? So uh, let's try solving one over x minus three, minus three plus one equals six over x squared minus nine. Okay, solve for x. The first thing is I have a rational equation, okay, it's because I, I, I have fractions, um, and I, I need to get rid of the fractions. That is always gonna be step one, getting rid of the fractions. I, I don't like working with fractions, okay? So let's get rid of those. To get rid of the fractions that I see, I'm gonna have to multiply both sides by the common denominator of all the denominators, so x squared minus nine, that factors as x plus three times x minus three. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply both sides of this by x plus three times x minus three. 
Um, so I got x plus 3 times x minus 3 times 1 over x minus 3 plus 1 equals x plus 3 times x minus 3 times 6 over x squared minus 9. Okay, and then let me distribute the x plus 3 times x minus 3 into these two terms here. Uh, when I do that, the x minus 3's cancel, and I'm going to be left with 1 times x plus 3 plus x plus 3 times x minus 3 times 1 equals x plus 3 times x minus 3. That's the same thing as x squared minus 9. So I got an x squared minus 9 up top and an x squared minus 9 down under. Those, those are gone. And I'm left with just 6 on the right. Now I'm back on more familiar ground because I, I, I no longer have any fractions. That, that's, that's good. I, I got rid of the fraction. That's, uh, I got rid of the fractions. That's, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, so let's keep solving here. We got x squared plus x. Uh, 3 minus 9 is negative 6. And then if I subtract 6 from both sides, I'm looking at x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. That's a quadratic equation. The first thing I always think of whenever I have a quadratic is if it factors, this one will factor. Uh, it's going to be x plus 4 times x minus 3. If I foil this back, I got x times x is x squared. Negative 3x plus 4x is x in the middle. And then 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 at the end. So that looks good. And then set each factor equal to 0. Uh, x plus 4 equals 0 means x is negative 4 x minus 3 equals 0 means the x is 3. Now, one thing that I always have to do whenever I have a rational equation is i got to check my answer. Okay, um, this, this is not something that we've been doing, okay, but it is necessary to do this now. There are only three equations in all of the algebra where you have to do this. Okay, um, it, this is one of them, okay, a rational equation. And what we're checking for is if we have any extraneous solution, okay? So what I'm saying at this point is negative four and three may or may not be the right answer. I don't know, okay? We'll have to check it out. So if I plug three back in the original equation, then, whoops, uh, I got a problem here. I'm dividing by zero. I can't divide by zero. That's not allowed, right? So throw away 3. 3 would be an, an extraneous solution, okay? And then uh, check if negative 4 is good. So the same deal. We plug that into the original equation, and we're checking to see that we get the same number on both sides. Uh, 1 over negative 4 minus 3 plus 1. 1 over negative 4 minus 3 is uh, negative 1 seventh. Negative 1 seventh plus 1 is 6 sevenths. So I should get 6 sevenths also on the right of this. Um, if I plug in x equals negative 4 there, uh, negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 9 is 7. So I'll have uh, 6 sevenths on the right. 6 sevenths equals 6 sevenths. That's true. Okay, so negative 4 is going to be kept, and 3 is an extraneous solution. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and uh, try problem 10. So in problem 10, this is the equation that I want to solve. Okay, and uh, again, first thing is I got to get rid of those fractions, right? So um, if, I, if I multiply both sides of this by the common denominator of, um, of all the denominators, that'd be x minus 1 times x plus 2, then that should do it, okay? So... Uh, I got x minus 1 times x plus 2 times 3 over x minus 1 plus 7 over x plus 2 equals x minus 1 times x plus 2 times 9 over x squared plus x minus 2. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and distribute the x minus 1 times x plus 2 into these two terms. The x minus 1s would cancel, and that's going to be with 3 times x plus 2 plus uh, when I bring in x minus 1 times x plus 2 into the second term, the x plus 2's cancel. And that's going to leave me with the 7 that was up top, also the x minus 1 that's coming in. Okay. Now x minus 1 times x plus 2, that's the same thing. 
as x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, so I got an x squared plus x minus 2 up top and an x squared plus x minus 2 down under. Those are both gone. And I'm left with 9 on the right. Okay, well, now I'm back on more familiar ground here because I no longer have any fractions. That's good. Uh, let's distribute 3 and distribute 7. So I got 3x plus 6 plus 7x minus 7 equals 9. 3x and 7x is 10x. Uh, 6 minus 7 is minus 1. And then if I add 1, I get 10x equals 10. Divide by 10, so x is 1. I think 1 is the answer. I need to check that. Uh, so if I plug 1 back in the original equation there, um, whoops, there's a problem with that first term there. I can't, I, I, I'd be dividing by 0. I know I can't divide by 0. So 1 would be an extraneous solution. I'd throw that away. That was the only possibility. It didn't work out. So there's going to be no solutions to this equation. Okay. Now, be sure to check your answers. The, the thing that I see the most is that, you know, with a rational equation is that students will solve these all, all right, fine, but then they'll forget to check the answers. Okay, so remember to check the answers. Okay. Um, let's try problem 11 next. So I want us to solve uh, 4x plus 3 over x plus 1 plus 2 over x equals 1 over x squared plus x. Okay, uh, let me get rid of these fractions that I see. So to do that, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by x times x plus 1. Um, so I got x times x plus 1 times 4x plus 3 over x plus 1 plus 2 over x equals x times x plus 1 times 1 over x squared plus x. Okay, and then let's distribute x times x plus 1 to these two terms here. When I distribute, the x plus 1's would cancel, and that's going to leave me with the 4x plus 3 that's up top, also the x that's coming into that first term, plus 2 uh, the add the x's are going to cancel, and then 2 is being multiplied by x plus 1, which is coming in. Now, x times x plus 1, that's the same thing as x squared plus x, right? So I got an x squared plus x, Divided by x squared plus x, those are gone. And I'm left with 1 on the right. Okay, now I'm back on the more familiar ground because I don't have any fractions, right? So uh, if I distribute x and distribute 2, I'm looking at 4x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 2 equals 1. Or 4x squared plus 5x if I subtract 1 from both sides, plus 1, that's equal to 0. Okay, and I end up forming a quadratic equation, even though I did not have a quadratic there to begin with. And that'll sometimes happen, you know, where you have a, a totally different equation, you get a, you know, an, a, a quadratic equation later on in the, in the process. Um, this is going to factor. It'd be 4x plus 1 times x plus 1. And I check that. 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x plus x is 5x, and 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so then set each factor equal to 0. 4x plus 1 equals 0 means that x is negative 1 fourth. x plus 1 equals 0 means that x is negative 1. I'll have to check that. Uh, negative 1 is an extraneous solution. Throw that away. I can't divide by 0. By the way, I, I, I have no idea... What, um, you know, it, like, like how many numbers I'm going to keep, you know, at the beginning of this problem, okay? It, like if I'm going to keep all of them or, or lose one of them or lose all of them or, or whatever. I, I have no idea unless I solve, okay? But um, you, your, your book likes to give problems that have extraneous solutions because, again, guess what students don't do? They forget to check their answers, okay? So re remember to do that. Um, and then if I plug in negative one-fourth, now the only thing I'm looking for is that I, I can't divide by zero. Well, if x is negative one-fourth, I'm not going to get zero at all in the denominator. If I check this, I'm going to get uh, negative 16 thirds on the left and negative 16 thirds on the right. 
right? negative 16 thirds equals negative 16 thirds, that's true. So negative 1 fourth is going to be kept. Okay. Um, here's uh, five homework problems that I'd like you to look at. The answers are right there. Um, and uh, at this point, now we're done with section 3.7. And uh, I, there's one more section, chapter 3, which is 3.8. We'll, uh, we'll hit that in the next video.